Hello, my name is Todd, and we're continuing on with doing uh, simple proofs uh, using the proper rules of inference. Okay, on um, this problem right here, we have to prove this conditional f then d. And we look through our premises, which are 1 and 2, and we don't see f then d. So uh, my typical strategy is then to look for the opposite of what I need to prove um, as an antecedent in a conditional. I'm going to look for something like this. Um, so if I find the opposite of the consequent, I can get what I need. Well, I don't see that either. So I'm on to my third strategy, as it were. And since this is a conditional, f uh, then d, I'm going to look for f then something and something then d, where these two somethings match up, because then I could go to f then d by hypothetical syllogism. So let's see if I've got the right parts. First, I need an f then something. Well, on line two, I have an f then something. The something is not both c and b. So uh, I've got this piece right here. So now I need that something, then d. And I find it on line two. That means all I need to do is put them together using hypothetical syllogism. So I get f, then d, from one and two, hs. Let's see, f, then this, this, then d. And we can cut out the middleman, as it were, and get f then d by hypothetical syllogism. Let's move on to another. Here, we have to prove c. Uh, one and two are our premises. First thing I need to do is look and see if I can find a c. And I find a c in line two. Now, uh, I need a c by itself, so I have to get the c out of line two. And I notice that line two is a disjunction. So let's suppose we have box or circle, and we want the circle. What we need to find is a not box. Then we can get a circle by disjunctive syllogism. So I need to find the opposite of the first disjunct. Uh, the first disjunct is not A and B. And there's the opposite right on line one. So this is a very simple one-step proof. One and two get a C, one, two, by disjunctive syllogism, and we're done. Okay, so uh, it's very important that you notice that this is a disjunction um, because if it were conditional, we would go look for something else to get the C. Okay, all right, let's move to the next. Okay. On uh, this one, we have to prove not uh, if d then e. We have two premises, and we look around for our, our conclusion, and we find it right here. It's on line one. It's part of a disjunction, so that means we need to find the opposite of the first disjunct. We need to find the opposite of a if and only if c, which we find right here on line two. So we're set up, it's easy to do, one step, not d, then e, one, two, disjunctive syllogism. And we're done. Try another. These are very easy right now. They, they will get harder. Um, we have to prove D. Uh, we have three premises. First thing we do is look at, uh, look for a D. We find it right here on line three, and it's part of a disjunction, which means we need to get the opposite of the first disjunct. So we need an A, then not C, in order to do a disjunctive syllogism to get to D. All right? So let's look and see if we see an A, then not C, and we don't see one. So, well, next I might think, well, let me look for its opposite in a conditional. Um, 
and I don't see that either. So I can't do a modus tollens, okay? Since I'm looking for A then C, and it's a conditional, my other trick is to look for A then something, something then C, and then I can form A then C by hypothetical syllogism. So let me see if I have an A then blank and a blank then C where the blanks match. Well, I have an A then blank on line one, and then I have a blank then not C on line two, and those blanks match up, those blanks are Bs. So we can do our hypothetical syllogism, so we get A then not C from one and two hypothetical syllogism. And we got this, line four, because it's the opposite of the first disjunct on line three, which means we can do a disjunctive syllogism between three and four, and we get D. All right, let's try another. Okay. On this one, uh, we have four premises. We have to prove another conditional, D then G. Uh, when we don't see D then G, we also don't see its opposite in an antecedent. So chances are we're going to make our D then G by finding a D then blank and a blank then G and putting them together to get D then G by hypothetical syllogism. We just have to make sure that we that these blanks match, okay? So do we have a D then blank? We do. It's tucked away in line two, so we need to get to that D then not F. But since line two is a conditional, first we have to go get A or B, all right? Um, but uh, let's back up. So we know we can get the D then blank. Um, with a little work. How about a blank then G? Do we have one of those? We do on line four, so that one's easy. It's just available to use. So our real goal is getting the D then not F out of line two. That requires getting the antecedent, the A or B. So let's look for an A or B, and I see an A or B on line three. It's part of a disjunction. So what that means is I need to get the opposite of the first disjunct. I need a not C in order to do a disjunctive syllogism to get the A or B. Do I have a not C? I do on line one and it's free and clear. It's ready to go. So the first step is one and three get me A or B. One and three disjunctive syllogism. Now, why did I get A or B? Well, look at line two. It says, if you have A or B, then you get D then not F, which is what I want. And I have A or B, so I can say D then not F from two and six modus ponens is the rule here, okay? And now remember, uh, so I've got this part right here, this D, uh, then something, and uh, we've also found that something and G uh, that was on line four. So we're just going to put those together by hypothetical syllogism. So what we're doing is we're looking at lines four and six, D then not F, not F then G. So we get rid of the middleman, as it were, and we get D then G from four and six hypothetical syllogism. And so that was a rather simple three-step proof.